Hi, in this video, we're gonna look at an application of uh, some of the work that we've already done with vectors. So I've used some letters here to emphasize a kind of physics application that you might often do with this particular kind of problem, but there are other applications as well. Uh, so don't get too hung up on the letters here in terms of the physics. So the idea here is that we wanna write a vector, I've labeled that F for force. So we wanna write a force vector as the sum of two other vectors. One, along this vector, I used V for velocity vector, which would indicate a direction of motion of an object, and another orthogonal to that velocity vector. All right, so the first idea here is that even though it does not use the word component or projection, that's really what we're after here. Uh, when I'm wanting to think about uh, F as uh, part of F that is a long V. The idea there is that we're looking at the component of F along V as the scalar. We want a vector here though, so we're really after the projection of F onto V. Projection of F onto V. So I want the vector projection of F onto V. So the scalar part of that, what we talked about in that last video, would be the component of F along V. So that would be the dot product, F dot V, divided by the magnitude of what we're projecting onto, V. So that's the component of F along V. And then I'm gonna use that as my scalar to rescale to get a vector that is along V of this magnitude, the absolute value of this magnitude could possibly be negative. So I'm gonna find a unit vector that is along V and I'm gonna use this scalar to rescale to get a vector that's along V. So the first thing that they asked for here, uh, F as the sum of two vectors, one along V, the first one that would be along V would be given by this calculation here. So it's important that you understand what it is you're calculating so that when they're talking about something like this, you recognize that that's really what they're asking for and you have these tools uh, that maybe use some different notation and some different vocabulary than what is in this problem, but that's really what you need to calculate here. So let's go ahead and do this calculation here. Uh, so F dot V, so I'll have two times one is two, plus negative three times negative one is three, plus one times one is one, so six in the numerator here, and then divide by magnitude of V, so I'll have the square root of one squared plus negative one squared plus one squared, so square root of one plus one plus one, so square root of three. So this is my scalar. Uh, notice that this will be a positive scalar, six over square root of three, a positive scalar, so that tells me that F is along V, and then I'm gonna take that scalar times a unit vector in the same direction as V. So my unit vector would be this vector V divided by its magnitude, so I'm gonna divide through by square root of three the magnitude. So one over square root of three, negative one over square root of three, one over square root of three. All right, if I go ahead and simplify this, uh, we'll get six over three, which simplifies to two, and then six over three, or negative six, don't forget the negative here, negative six over three, so negative two, and six over three, so two. All right, so that's the first vector that they asked us to find. Uh, write f as the sum of two vectors, one along v and one orthogonal to v. Okay, so we need to go back and think a little bit about what we know about orthogonal vectors. So the definition of orthogonal vectors means that the dot product is zero. Uh, and remember that there are really three ways that can happen, the dot product being zero. One of the ways is if one of the two vectors in the dot product is the zero vector. That's not the case here. None of my vectors here are the zero vector. Another way is if the other vector in the dot product is the zero vector, not the case here. And then the third way would be if they are perpendicular to each other. So in this case, the word orthogonal, because of the context and, being to and noticing that none of these vectors here are the zero vector, orthogonal in this case is really representing the idea of perpendicular. That's not what orthogonal always means, but if none of the vectors you're working with are the zero vector, then 
that is sometimes used in place of the word perpendicular. So in this case, we're really looking for a vector that is perpendicular to that vector v. All right, so we don't necessarily have a tool for how to do that, and although we might know that the dot product is zero, we can think about that a little bit. But I want to go back to think about the geometry of this idea of the sum of two vectors. I'm going to just do a little sketch here of some vectors and label them f and v. I'm not going to plot them like they would be on a coordinate system. I'm just going to do a couple of vectors here. Uh, we know that we do have an acute angle between these two vectors because their dot product was uh, positive. So two vectors f and v. And uh, I have now calculated the uh, vector uh, that is the projection of f along v. So let me do that here in a different color projection of f along v would be this vector that I just drew right there, projection of f onto v. And what it's asked me to do here is write this vector f as the sum of two vectors. So when we first looked at adding vectors, one of the things we looked at was the geometry a little bit. We didn't emphasize it a whole lot, but to kind of think about what the geometry of adding two vectors would look like, uh, so if I think about f as the sum of two other vectors, one along v and then one orthogonal, in this case that means perpendicular to v, here would be that second vector that I'm after where we've got a right angle here. And when we talked about the geometry of adding vectors, we did it like that where we did it tip to tail so that the terminal point of one vector lined up with the initial point of the second vector. I'm going to label this second vector here w. Uh, that we're interested in here. So it's asked us to write this vector f as the sum of two vectors, one along v and one perpendicular to v. And I just used this picture here just to kind of organize my thoughts and think a little bit about what it's asking me to do. But maybe you can see from this picture how we would actually find w here. So this vector f is the sum of the projection of f onto v plus the vector w that we're after here. So just algebraically, if you solve this equation for w, uh, you'll get that w is f minus the projection of f onto v. All right, and I already have the vector f, and I already have the vector that is the projection of f onto v, so all I need to do to finish this is subtract those two vectors here. So my vector f, 2, negative 3, 1, minus my vector projection of f onto v, 2, negative 2, 2. And if I do that vector subtraction, I get 2 minus 2 in the first component, so 0. Negative 3 minus negative 2, so be careful with the minus negative there. Negative 3 plus 2 is what that will turn into, so negative 1 and then 1 minus 2, so minus 1. All right, so there's the vector w that it's asked us for here. So I've actually done all the mathematics at this point. It's really just maybe a matter of writing my answer uh, like they actually asked us to here. So I've done all the calculations, but it's asked me to write that vector f as the sum of two vectors. So we'll go ahead and write the answer like that. I could write the vector f in component form. I'm just going to go ahead and use the label f here. But the f is the sum of two vectors. One of them is along the vector v. So that would be this first vector here. And then the second vector would be the vector I calculated over here that is perpendicular to v. Um, so 0, negative 1, negative 1. And we should double check that if I add these two vectors together, I do indeed get the vector f that I was supposed to get here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a box around here because that's what they asked us to do. And maybe I'll go ahead and label these as well. This is one of the vectors that is along v. And this is the other vector that is orthogonal to, or I'll just use a little symbol here for perpendicular to v. All right. So this is something we'll use also over and over again in the semester, whether it's forces and vectors or other things that we'll be looking at. But basically decomposing one vector into how much of it is with something and then how much of it is left over from that. So we'll see this over and over again.